Hey guys, this is Universa. Um, we're back with Serving Up Comics. Um, I know it's been a while, but uh, you know it's been a crazy uh, couple of uh, months. So you know it's been uh, a little hectic, but you know it's glad to be back here. Um, I'm joined, of course, by uh, Nick Valero. Nick, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, you know, it's a crazy situation that we're in, but you know what? It doesn't stop me from reading my comics. Yeah, um, you know, I realized, Nick, uh, we were just catching up uh, right before because we, we hadn't uh, podcasted for a little bit um, and caught mm-hmm. up and we're all uh, kind of stuck in our houses. Uh, Nick, what are, you, what are you doing to um, pass the time to get through these uh, quarantine days? Uh, either catching up on TV shows that I've always said I wanted to watch. Okay. Or uh, playing video games that I've always said I wanted to play. Um, what what so, are the, yeah? What are what are some examples? What what are these uh, TV shows that you were like never watched? I, I I never got a chance to watch Supernatural. You never go okay. So you got never, 10 seasons. never got a chance to watch Supernatural. I okay. finished it. I am off cut up. I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it occupied my uh, Supernatural occupied my my waking life for wow. the last for like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see like so you watched it all the way? Was there a giant shift from when it becomes like a W for when it's a WB show to when it's a CW show? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like uh, I, I was I was talking to somebody about it the other day, and that show immediately becomes uh, it, it's it, you can see when it's a WB show because they are sticking to kind of like a formula. Okay. It, it's but it's not a bad formula. It's 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 not a bad formula well at all, you know mm-hmm. the 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 brothers have to have a mission to to do with the brothers you know have to make a sacrifice they make that sacrifice, the, uh, which are uh, the end of the end of the end, uh, beginning of the next season they deal with whatever sacrifice they had to make and then they move on to what the consequences are for fixing that sacrifice. Yeah, it, it's literally a pattern that just keeps happening over and over again in the series. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a, mm-hmm. I did notice that once it became the WB, Mm -hmm. I mean, once it became the the CW, CW, they started working a lot more with angels. Okay. That's when that's when the whole like uh, angels and demon arc started like really happening, where they started getting involved with angels. They started like Mm -hmm. uh, partnering up with angel with demons a little bit more. So it got it got more religious. It definitely did. It really, really did. Yeah. But I mean, in not a bad way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, that's uh, all right. That's something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about yourself? Um, yeah, you know, I uh, I I was just uh, I was watching um, like shows I haven't watched. Um, Robotech finally mm-hmm. got around to starting that. It's a great anime. Um, started trying to finish uh, Umbrella Academy, which I just kind of stopped like halfway through. I <laughs> Forever. So for whatever reason, and then, you know, just watching a lot of, like, like Adult Swim shows, like Tim and Eric. What, uh, what's stopping you on Umbrella, on Umbrella Academy? Uh, I don't know what, what's, what stopped me. I just, like, I think I, you know, I feel with uh, some Netflix shows, like, there's a few I want to see, and then when they all kind of, like, stack on top of each other and you don't, like, binge it in one weekend, I just get, like, intimidated by all the content. So it's just mm. kind of like my brain just like fries and then it's like stop, you know? Uh, yeah, because the Brooklyn Academy is really good. Yeah, no, it was, it was, I'm, it was, I'm actually looking forward to the second season. I'm, yeah, whenever uh, whenever that is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah all, all I want this year is just the boys to see season two of the boys and Rick and Morty. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, I'm glad, uh, glad you're doing well, man. Uh, yeah, it's uh, good to talk to you again. And, with this, uh, you know, with this podcast, we're, you know, we're back again. It, you know, we're always discussing comics and TV shows. Um, but for this this podcast, since we're just in the middle of this crisis, um, we're, we're trying to make it just a little more, uh, have a little more depth to the discussion. Not to say the previous uh, discussion we had didn't like that, but just kind of the seriousness of, like, the comic book industry and the, the pop culture pop culture uh pathos right now because um if people may have uh, heard um a few weeks ago they canceled san diego comic-con which has never happened in yeah, like 50 been, years done. yeah it's never been done before so it's literally unprecedented um and 
the uh, governor, um, excuse me, Governor Gavin Newsom. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, we won't get, we won't have uh, any mass gatherings until like a vaccine is uh, found. Um, you know, according to his um, uh, state address. Um, you know, one of the the many state addresses, and um, and also just right now, the convention center is being used as a sort of a yeah hospital. Yeah, it's like a shelter to home, is what I read, and you know they're trying to help as many people as they can, which is uh, morally the right thing to do. And you know, in this uh, crisis, yeah, got to help them. Uh, but Nick, what was your what was your reaction to when you heard the news? I mean, did you uh, see this? You know, the writing's been on the wall for a little bit. You know, you just mm-hmm. you know. Not to uh, say, uh, yeah, pessimist, but yeah, it's just, yeah. What, what was your reaction? Um, honestly, I, I, I wasn't surprised. I mean, every every other convention had been getting canceled, right? Um, like E three, um, you know, Comic Con, Anime Expo, every every con or anything else that you know may be coming up in the next couple of months. That usually, you know, starts in June, July, or anything like that. Yep. It was it was already kind of bound to happen, and you know what? I I totally understand it. I know that it's it's kind of a it's 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 kind of a pain. You know, I I do want to I, I want to get my con on. You know, oh. I want to I want to go hang out with people and stuff like that. But the only problem is that I I do recognize that you know, it's uh it can it, it can be very harmful to a lot of people's health. Yeah, and, yeah, because yeah, as much as we uh, would love to go to the con, we also you know want people to be healthy and safe and alive yeah i mean to be totally honest i think that what would be like super super cool is if the organizers for san diego comic-con ended up just doing online panels yeah yeah like, that's um that's what i've heard a lot of uh cons were doing yeah uh, emerald comic-con might have done that and yeah one i know WonderCon did a uh virtual con experience in Buying, buying certain merchandise. Yeah, and I think that would be that would be really cool. You know, if you have your, you know, just so that way merchants can still kind of, you know, you know, they can still kind of get their their sales and stuff like that. You know, maybe anybody who already bought a, you know, a booth and stuff like that for it, because the the only people I'm really more worried about are the the vendors, right, and the people that are actually going to be selling at the cons because. You already know, you know, they already spent a bunch of money, you know, yeah. you, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but, you know, a, a, when a company makes, a, you know, the, the decision to go to a con, mm-hmm. it's super expensive. It's it, it can be anywhere from, you know, a grand to five grand, you know, depending on the the booth size, you know, what exactly they're getting and everything like mm-hmm. that. And, you know, while they're there, they need to be making money. Yeah in order to make that booth worth it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these people already bought booths and they're probably going to struggle trying to get that money back because Comic-Con doesn't want to give it back. You know, they, they, they're just going to have to spend it again. But also a lot of these people may need that money in order to, you know, keep their businesses afloat. Yeah. And stuff like that. So, yeah. And then, um, uh, speaking to your experience, cause you've, uh, worked booths, I'm assuming, uh, through Hyperkin, right? Yeah, Hyperkin, you know, I've worked a couple of comic book booths and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's a there's a bunch of different, you know, things. Yeah. There. Is there anything that you could uh, say to how we could support certain uh, certain businesses um, just in, you know, because everyone's really hurting? Uh, or any, yeah. To be totally honest, I mean, if you're if you're really going to, uh, I think, you know, staying, uh, you know, staying true to your, your local comic book stores kind of mm-hmm. probably be like the, your best bet. The only problem is, is that a lot of the comic book stores are closed. Yes. And yeah. And they're not doing anything else. So, I mean, I think as of right now, the best possible thing that people can do in order to support their co- their local comic book store is to stay home. Yeah. Stay home. Yeah. Um, you know, order if you if you really want that comic book. Unfortunately, I would say you know, order it on Amazon mm-hmm. and you know, read it at home. That's yeah. the that's the best possible advice that we can do. I think everybody can just should just stay healthy. Yes. And then, because um, the faster we can kind of, you know, weed out, you know, this uh, who has coronavirus, who mm-hmm. who doesn't, and everything like that, and. You know, maybe we can start getting some semblance of normality back. Yeah, you know, slowly, 
sort of um, so slowly have certain functions again. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I, I know that the, the like, not everything's going to open up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and everything yeah. like that, but I think it, it, you know, people, people going out, people not wearing masks, people not, you know, taking the situation seriously. I think that's what's going to hold everybody else back, mm -hmm. you know, because more people are going to be infected, more people are going to be, uh, are going to start testing positive, mm -hmm. and then you know, those people, you know, unknowingly infect other people, and yes. then it just keeps the cycle going. Yeah. yeah, and you know, yeah, just you know gotta just stick it out um stick through this you know just being home is saving lives literally yeah you know and that's mm -hmm. what that's what skype zoom you know yeah. that's what all these like different that's what all these other places discord whatever it takes you know hanging out with your friends that way yeah yeah need to yeah stay you know that's a good way to stay social and stay sane yeah. um i was also going to add you know and the next year um, you know we'll probably have a comic-con uh you know, the next Comic-Con, yeah, that, that's going to be even sweeter. Exactly. Not only that, but also I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if, um, you know, if they skipped this Comic-Con or even if they just moved it, you know, mm -hmm. if uh, uh, they figured out what exactly it is. But the only, the only problem that I was, because uh, I, I was talking about it with a couple of buddies of mine, mm -hmm. and they were saying, you know, well, Comic-Con, you know, it can always happen at the end of the year and stuff like that and i was and i go yeah that that possibly can you know maybe they could do it in december or something like mm -hmm. that you know we can have like a winter comic-con that'd be kind of interesting yeah but the other thing is that you have to understand the the comic-con yes is a really big con mm -hmm. but also comic-con which at the san diego convention center doesn't only do comic-con yes they do concerts, they do, mm -hmm. you know, events, they do everything like that. You know, just this, just because Comic-Con got delayed doesn't mean that they're going to push all of these other things back and not, like, and, and, and not have them and stuff yeah. like that. So Comic-Con just may be canceled this year, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it is going to be a shame. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it, I, I love Comic-Con. Comic-Con is one of my favorite things to do. I, I love cons. And stuff like that. I was actually, I, I think I was talking to either you or I was talking to somebody else about, like, I was really disappointed that this year I hadn't gone to a con yet. Mm. And it doesn't look like I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no no one is. Uh, yeah, I don't think I went to any any cons early th this year. Um, you know, I was, yeah, I, I think there was, like, Emerald Sea. That was, that was canceled. And, mm. yeah, I'm, yeah, I didn't go mm. to any. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was really looking forward to going to E3 this year because I wanted to. We were, I was going to go check out the, uh, was it the Series X from Xbox and you know check out the new games and do everything like that, like I usually do. But unfortunately, once again, that got canceled as well. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, at least um, I was also just going to report that um, for an update from uh, San Diego Comic Con is uh, the uh, the badges that people bought. Um, got transferred to next the comic-con uh 2021 so That's good. Pre yeah i appreciate them for doing that yeah and, yeah and uh just go just going back to comic stores i'm also going to report that um there are no comic books being shipped right now um diamond comics which was the main distributor for dc and marvel and other independent labels um they're they're in a, a real bind with um getting these products out to comic retailers um, just in terms of the logistics of uh, their business and everything. Uh, what are your, uh, yeah, it's been a month without a physical comic uh, being published. Nick, uh, what are your uh, thoughts on that? The, okay, the only thing that I can say is probably going to most likely happen, especially for people who really want to like read comics or people who are still, because I mean, it's just because comic books aren't being shipped, that doesn't mean that they're not being, you know, they're not coming out. Yeah. You know, new issues, new issues of uh, DC Comics just keep coming out mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It, it just the only thing is that instead of using their, um, you know, their actual like hardcover or paperback uh, distribution centers, they're just putting it up on their apps. Yeah. And stuff like yeah. that. And, and unfortunately, what's probably going to happen is the the coronavirus could actually start to phase out paper comics mm -hmm. 
And yeah, um, yeah. I that, mean, right that, now that has to be a, a, a real reality that may come. Yeah, yeah. Because I was going to say, right now, a lot of uh, small businesses, um, in terms of comic book stores, are uh, really, really struggling. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but your comic book stores are always struggling. Yes. Yes. Um, that it, it, it's the reason why they sell, you know, pop figures. It's the reason why they sell board games. It's the mm-hmm. reason why they sell dice or anything else. It's because it, comic books don't pay the bills. Yes. You know, it, <laughs> right, it right. may be a comic book store, but the comic books don't necessarily pay the bills mm-hmm. as much as everything else does. You know, for yeah. games or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so the only problem is that our, you know, be because this whole quarantine is setting up new, um, uh, what was it? It's, start, it's setting up new habits. Mm-hmm. You know, it takes 90 days to start a habit. And we're getting really close to, to that 90 days. Um, and what's going to happen is that people are going to be making it more of a habit to check their app or pay for the app. Mm-hmm. You know, and read it off their phone than it is to actually go down to the comic book store and, you know, pick up a comic. Yeah, you know, and not only that, but also it just becomes more convenient. It becomes you know a little easier. You know, I don't have to worry about you know spending the ten minutes out of my drive to <laughs> go to my comic book store and then mm-hmm. you know picking up my comic or anything like that, like picking up my my uh, what was it my list. But so unfortunately, it may get people used to reading comic books on their phones. Mm-hmm. And it may start to kind of, you know, phase out the actual like handheld comics, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could, you know, could very well be. It's just in such an unprecedented time. Yeah, it's everything's up for uh, grabs in terms of changing. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want that. I love no, I love no. having, I love having comic books in my hand and stuff like that. Yeah, I love the smell, I love <laughs> the texture, you know. But the thing is that it, it it's also very expensive for the uh, what is it? It's also very expensive for the companies to make as well. Yeah, comic, a yeah. comic book is really expensive to make. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's three ninety nine, which is the price right now. That's yeah, that's that's kind of expensive. I mean, that's how much a magazine was back in the day. Yeah, so I mean, it, they're three ninety nine, and you know, it's it's a matter of you know we have to make the comic, we have to yeah uh, print the paper, we have to you know make we have to use ink, we have to do all these other things. Whereas now it's it's all digital, it becomes a lot easier. Um, yeah, I really hope that hardcore comics don't. I mean, uh, hardcover comics don't become you know things of the past. Yeah, God, I hope I hope so. I hope not. Excuse me, I hope not either. Yeah, um, but yeah, let's you know, let's uh, keep uh, all our comic favorite comic book stories in our thoughts, and mm-hmm. you know, just hope for the best. We'll you know emerge out of this crisis hopefully soon. Um, and in and in the uh, later news, um, we were talking um about a show on the DC Universe app um called Harley Quinn. Um, Nick, I know you've been a fan of that one for a little bit. Um, you probably recommended it to me. And with the first season wrapped a couple weeks ago, and they're already on the second. Nick, uh, Nick, would you say this is the best show on the app right now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I have been saying that uh, Doom Patrol has been the best show uh, on the app and stuff like that. But uh, I would have to say that Harley Quinn is probably my my new favorite. Yeah, that's like uh, that's like your uh, comfort show, huh? Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a show that you can definitely uh, not uh, turn your brain off. And, yeah, you know, just have a good time. Oh yeah, of course. everything else. It it is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's it can't it, it it can be very offensive at times. You know, so if you are very easily offended by certain content and everything like that, I do warn you. Sometimes it does offend, but yeah. it does do it in a way that. Um, just makes you chuckle. Mm-hmm. It's 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 very it's very comedic. Um, it, it does the number one thing of a it, it never you're never ahead of the joke. Yeah. At a uh, during the show, you are all you are always wondering how what are they gonna do? What's the joke that they're gonna make and everything like that? And I think that that's probably one of the best parts about it. 
Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> jokes that are, you know, made me laugh. Um, and also just a lot of fucked up jokes, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually really like the idea that they had for the ensemble. I love the idea that they had for the ensemble. I mean, Alan Tudyk, I'm loving the fact that Alan Tudyk is just getting a shit ton of work. Yeah. For this. Because I, I think he does, like, five characters. Yeah, he's, um, well, he's Joker, Clayface. Um, he, I think he was Felix Faust in one episode. He was, he was also Faust. He was also, like, a miscellaneous person. Like, just a, a, a person that was, like, there. So, yeah. I mean, he does a lot of vo- voices on the actual show itself and everything but i i really do like the way that the ensemble works together i love clayface uh i i really do like uh which uh psycho i i yeah tony hale is great <laughs> yeah you know um not only that but also his comedic timing is amazing yeah he like, gets on the first episode Doctor. yeah I, I I really like I really like that I do like the the persona that they gave him for some reason he's just like this weird like racist sexist yeah he just hates women <laughs> he hates women and he hates like minorities and shit like that for some reason and he's just he's like definitely uh, a comic guy. huh <laughs> he's definitely like a comic guy or something. Yeah, like, it, it, it's it, it's really funny. Like, uh, I, I couldn't stop laughing uh, the other day. I was re-watching it just so, for this. And um, what was it? It was the scene where they finally get into Black Man. It, they finally get into the, 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 League of Do- the Legion of Doom. Yes. And then they're doing, they're, uh, the Legion of Doom is doing the intro video, the, the training video. Mm. And then you can see uh, Psycho getting beaten up by uh, Black Manta in the back. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, "What did you tell Black Mana for? What did you tell Black Mana so that way he, that way he would beat you up?" And he goes, "Nothing racist." <laughs> <laughs> and I just was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's like a gag on top of the gag, and so many things like that's in the background. That thing's playing. Yeah, yeah just, it's, you it's know, really it's good. Like, it's just yeah, super, it's just like good. Reminds me of like the heyday of the Simpsons, where it's just gag on top of gag. Um, yeah, just I love... honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the way that uh, FX's uh, Deadpool show would have been. Oh yeah, yeah, that was uh, developed by Donald Glover. That would have been. Uh... Yeah, that, I read. The, I read some of this first script, and like, yeah, I can't believe they shot that down. Yeah, I mean, I really, I really do like the way that that was supposed to be coming out, but I do kind of feel like this is like a nice substitute. Mm-hmm. Because in a way, it's kind of doing the same thing. Like yeah. Harley Quinn is still kind of she not necessarily breaking the fourth wall, but she she knows that she's insane. Yeah, and there's she, a lot of moments where she, you know, is talking to her sane self. Right. She uh, saying, she's trying to like get control over what's going on. Yeah. Um. There's. there's not to say, you know, Harley Harley is her own independent character, but there is some Deadpool elements to her, I would say. That's oh, it. yeah. The, just the idea that you can't necessarily predict what she's going to do. Uh, was it she, you know, she all she wants to do is just cause, like, mayhem and chaos. But there is a little bit of, like, righteousness in there. Yeah. Like, yeah, because the, 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 the basis of, you know, the show is just... Uh, you know this uh, uh, this female character trying to uh, get over a breakup and uh, be her own independent person, and yeah, that's you know that's a pretty uh, pretty strong statement. Besides, yeah, I, yeah, I would say. Uh, mm-hmm. I would definitely recommend it. I mean, if you haven't seen the show, go see it. Yes, please do. Um, Take some time out of your day to day and just go watch it. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Any other uh, any other moments you could think of from the show you're just loving? I love everything with uh, Killer Shark, Ron Ron Fuchs, I believe. Yes, uh, which are Killer, uh, which are uh, um, what is it? Yeah, he does a he does an amazing job. He, uh, I actually really liked him in uh, that show. Uh, was it Powerless? Oh, he wasn't powerless. He wasn't powerless. Yeah, oh, he was. Uh, okay. He was one of the in, he was one of the inventors. He and he was hilarious in that too. So, yeah, it is. PlayStation Network. Yeah. <laughs> did, they have, uh, did they have any other like streaming shows besides Powerless? Was it just Powerless? No, no, no. Uh, which are not not 
The, you're thinking of Powers. Powers, excuse me. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. It was Powers. Sorry. Um, Powers was uh, the DC show. Yeah. No, Power. Uh, which are Power? Uh, what was it? Powerless was the. It was the DC show that was on NBC. Yes. And it was all about and in uh, which are uh, Wayne's. Uh, Alan Tudyk that too. Yeah, it's Bruce Wayne's cousin who owns a uh, insurance company. <laughs> for yes. the and they're dealing with like uh, all the damages that superhumans do to yeah. the world, wow. which only it, it makes sense. You know, you know, damage control is a comic book okay. and everything like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, so that was really funny. He was on there as one of the inventors of like how to protect people mm-hmm. from like superpowers and stuff like that. And uh, he was, he always killed it. He, he was yeah. always really, really funny. Yeah. We stand Alan Tudyk for sure. Yeah. I mean, Warner brothers just loves Alan Tudyk. So let's keep yeah. guessing and stuff. Just things we wouldn't expect. I was just going to add, I love uh, also Frank, the plant JB smooth. Just great. <laughs> that just is great. Really, that yeah, was, just, uh, like he just gets that guy. Like he's trying to help Ivy escape and he just gets some dude like stoner guy to drive him around yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they just like really just take from the plant to like some odd places <laughs> that, that's yeah they, they they do that uh i i really like the interactions between um was it harley and her family mm-hmm. yeah um the voice of uh cow and, cow and chicken carly adler from cow and uh. chicken red guy he's carly's dad <laughs> He's also a star screen. And I just yeah. love it's like just, just degenerate character, you know, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, like pathos to the show. Like Harley's family is just so unsupportive and terrible. Yeah, she has to like make another one. She has yeah. to make another one. Yeah. And that's, you know, uh, there's a lot, you know, besides the comedy, which is just incredibly funny. And there's a lot of uh, heart to the show where it's just about messed up people. Yeah, it's it, it's 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 kind of about like messed up people finding messed up people, mm-hmm. and you know the, you can always uh, find a family in that and stuff and everything else, which I think is very interesting. It's a it's a nice little it's a it's it's a it's a very interesting way of like kind of like looking at it. Yeah. Of like, you know, oh, you know, just because we're messed up or just because you know I feel insane doesn't mean that people won't accept me for who I am. Yeah. And everything else. Uh, there is a... I, I really do like the idea that they keep on dealing with this um, interesting thing of Harley can't get over the Joker. Yes, yeah. You know, or... Um, I, I like the idea that they actually changed Harley's uh, backstory. Mm-hmm. Because in the original backstory, it was that he pushed her in. That's yeah. the new backstory that the... De- that uh, DC came up with is that Joker pushes her into the vat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do like the idea of no, she chose to go into the vat. Yeah, she did it herself. Yeah. And but the and, but I do like the idea of she chose to jump into the vat and the fact that you know Joker is just only the bad guy is the lie that she's been trying to tell not only it, not everybody else but herself. Yeah. And you know she has to come to terms with it. In mm-hmm. order to and everything else. It's it, it's such a good book. It's such a good show. Yeah, it's yeah, it's amazing. Like it totally totally made the D- DC app like worth it. Even though, um, you, I'm sharing it with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. When I when I when I went on the other day, it was like, oh, you've watched these episodes. I was like, I haven't watched any of that. <laughs> um, are you enjoying the second season? It's kind of adapting No Man's Land in the comic. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a uh, it, it's. It's interesting. I, I I like the fact that it hasn't dropped the uh, the comedy aspect that I loved so much. Yeah. I think that it can go wherever the fuck it wants, mm-hmm. as long as it keeps the humor to like the ten it was at for the first season. Yeah. Humor. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, if if they want, you can go an entire. Like, I love the idea of like, oh yeah, like they found T-shirts inside of Harley's uh, room. I say Suicide Squad on it, and it's just like Suicide Squad gear. Yeah. And everything like that. And it's like, oh, who are like, oh, is that our new team name? And it's like, no, it's just some douchebags that keep on trying to recruit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, I think that's I think that's always really funny. It's like, oh yeah, you know. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing some of like the um, what was it like some of the um, Gotham City Sirens? 
Oh yeah, because they're, you know, they have Catwoman. They introduced Catwoman and Batwoman, more female characters. Um, you yeah. could totally uh, yeah, I wonder if they're. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind maybe like getting them on the on the like uh, interacting with the group a little bit more. Yeah. And stuff like that, or even having like their own uh, episodes or anything like that. I think Huntress would be an interesting uh, addition into yeah. it. So would Black Canary. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm just waiting because the show already goes in so many different ways. Yeah. I am waiting for their musical episode because I figure okay. that's going to be hilarious. Yeah. As long as they get uh, Bane in there, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I really want Bane. I do want... Uh, the, the one thing I do want is I want them to bring back uh, Neil Patrick Harris as the Music Meister. The Music Meister, yeah. yeah Be- you know. Because uh, in Brave and the Bold, he did an amazing job for their musical episode. Yeah, he's a great... I mean, he got an Emmy. <laughs> Uh, he has an angelic voice, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it was so good, it got, it gave, it got them an Emmy. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh. Let's, let's hope so yeah um yeah it's a great show um yeah just love everything about it cannot cannot uh recommend it more so telling honestly you. the the second time i was watching it i was really trying to watch it critically okay and trying to find things wrong with it mm. and i was having such a hard time yeah because even though i was like i i had a notebook in my hand and i was trying to i was trying to write down some notes of like things that i didn't like about it i kind of just forgot and just started watching. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was, it was just too, it was too good. Like I just couldn't stop watching it, and I just lost. I, I, all me trying to be critical of the show, uh, just faded away, and I, I just had that nice little notion of like the show's amazing. I love it. Too good, too good. It's a good comfort show. Especially yeah, it is. It's very much so. Just you know, get a nice joint going, nice bag of weed, and watch that show. <laughs> That is definitely a show that you can you can get high to and enjoy the hell out of it. Yes, Kevin Smith probably does that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Um, so just segueing into our last topic, uh, what are, what are we reading? Um, I know that um, isn't any physical media, but there's a lot of um, you know, there's a lot of digital comics out there. Um, I was gonna throw out right away, uh, Batman: The Adventure Continues, which is a uh, Web comic right now. Um, I believe they were trying to get out physical copies at some point, collections mm-hmm. of each web comic. But it continues um, from the end of Batman, the animated series, um, and it, I, I believe it's like in this midpoint between, like somewhere around like in DCAU, uh, Justice League era, you know, and Batman Adventures. And okay. It's, yeah, it's it's telling like a lot of um, sort of uh, unexplored. Uh, aspects of the mythos that they never got a chance to do in uh, the animated series. So, uh, not, you know, spoilers. Well, they kind of said that they were exploring Jason Todd. Um, Deathstroke's supposed to make an appearance. And, okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, really, it's really cool to see that world because, I don't know, it's weird. Um, I know, like, there's a lot of nostalgia around, but, like, the DCAU was, um, you know, there was a lot of shows, but still, like, there's a lot of unexplored things that you could do because that the writing on those shows were so great. Um, season one of Justice League Unlimited is like my favorite thing of all of DCAU. And mm. the comic is comic is just so fun. The adventure continues to seeing Batman like fight Lex Luthor or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, I would really recommend taking a, taking a read. It's on the, you know, you could buy it on Comicsology. Is it not on the uh, DC app? I don't believe it's on the DC app yet. You know what the thing is? I, I, I've noticed that on the DC app. I noticed that they, for like, at least like, it's at least like a week or two. It's like at least two weeks when a yeah. new comic book or anything like that comes out. It, it's not on the app, mm-hmm. which does kind of frustrate me. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, because you're like, what, what am I uh, spending this money for? <laughs> yeah, it really does frustrate me. Or sometimes they're, uh, they're animated series. I mean, they're animated stuff like don't come out and i'm like what the, what the hell yeah yeah exactly um uh, any, any, uh, mm-hmm. uh actually i started catching up on uh which had some star wars comic books okay um you know with the the clone wars coming out and you know everything else i really did want to kind of you know dive back into that kind of storyline so uh i started reading kanan uh the last pad one okay. uh I started going into uh, the Darth Vader storyline uh, and everything like that. Some those can those are some 
really, really, really good comic books. If you are a big fan of Rebels, I would definitely recommend re- oh, reading Kanan because it does kind of give you a nice little backstory of yeah. him with his uh, with his uh, uh, master. Not only that, about what exactly he did during the purge. You know, how what, how did he survive? You know, how did he get to where he is? Yeah. And stuff like that. Uh, I really do like Darth Vader because Darth Vader gives you like a nice little insight. Uh, he like uh, when they when they happen to attack uh, Naboo and everything else, and he actually goes to go visit Padme's uh, crypt. Mm. Uh, some some really like touching moments. Some uh, some kind of hard to read moments too. Uh, but yeah, I've been I've been I've been reading those. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I want to check those out if I don't have the time. Um, and then can you get those uh, digitally as well? You can get those digitally, yeah. Uh, you can also buy them. Uh, what was it? I, I know if you go to like the Marvel uh, website. Yeah. Uh, what was it? You can you can get all of their comic books and stuff like that straight off the Marvel website. <laughs> okay. Anything on DC Universe you could recommend? DC Universe, uh, you know what? I did go back uh, and I started rereading uh, some of the older ones. Yeah. Uh, like I started rereading, um, what's it called? Uh, the, I started reading like the Long Halloween. I started going through, uh, was it some old Batman comic books? I did go through uh, a Green Lantern comic book. Uh, I think it was like the Emerald Knight. Okay, that's a good run. Yeah, that one that one was really really good. Uh, Blackest Night is also a really nice one. In yeah, I mean, I I never got a chance to read the whole thing. Yeah, it's like it's a huge. <laughs> yeah. It's it's so it's so big, but uh, actually on the app it does have like the um, what was it? It has the 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 thing. It actually has like the storyline, mm-hmm. and it tells you which comic books went in the series. Right. And it has it like categorized, so it's like, okay, read this, now read this, read this. Yeah. So it did make it a little bit simpler and a little bit easier to read. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was, you know, I think I was reading the Sub Diego arc um, from o- the Aquaman run back in 2003. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm reading it on your app, so just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's happy to see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, just really that, and yeah, there's a lot of good comics on there we'd recommend. Yeah, um, uh, actually, I've been. Uh, I okay. also started reading um, a lot of manga. Okay, manga. All right. I started. I started uh, catching up on My Hero Academia. I started okay. catching up on uh, what was it? Food Wars, uh, Dragon Ball Z. You know, uh, just reading as as many you know comic books and stuff like that that I can kind of get my hands on. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Um, but we're a little pressed on time, so I believe that's our show. Um, Nick, where can uh, people find you at on social media? Uh, yeah, the people can. You guys can find me at uh, the Nick Valero on uh, what was it on Twitter and on Facebook. Cool. And you could find me on Twitter and Instagram g nine eight nine two. You could follow the Waffle Press on Twitter at the Waffle Press and on Instagram at the Waffle Press Podcast. Um, Please like, share, subscribe on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, um, and Apple Podcasts. Um, And thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We've been professionally unprofessional.